hello and welcome to the Sheila and Rick show. We're going to talk about music, we're going to talk about guitar, and we're going to have a lot of fun talking about background of music and so on. So welcome to our show. Thank you. It's nice to have you here. Oh, it's now, Sheila, fun. you've been playing music or singing music here in the Detroit area for some time. Decades. Decades. <laughs> Longer than anyone should. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And Rick, you've been playing a long time, I am sure. Uh, since probably the mid-80s, I would say. Mid-80s? Yep. Well, that's great. I've been playing since the 50s, so <laughs> it's been a long time. Anyway, welcome to our show. Thank you, George. Sheila, talk to me about your, your background. Do you have any special influences? That, I know you're a jazz singer. Uh, do you have any special kind of influences that when you were growing up, you kind of said, hey, man, I really like Ella Fitzgerald, you know, there, she's great, or somebody else that you might like? Well, growing up, my mom was a jazz fan, and she said, listen to Sarah Vaughan, listen Ooh. to Dinah Washington. Um, she said, these are the singers that you should emulate because their voices are rich and soulful and have a lot of expression. And so I, I took her advice. Those are still among my favorites, Sarah Vaughan, uh, Dinah Washington, and the other Diana, Diana Ross of oh, the yeah. Supremes. <laughs> I wanted to be Diana Ross. <laughs> I had the fantastic pleasure of seeing Sarah Vaughan in New York Wonderful. in the 1950s at uh, Basin Street, I believe. I bet she and was in her prime then. She was in her prime. Yeah. And I got a little story I got to tell about Sarah Vaughan. Oh, do tell. She was, she was rather slim at the time. And she had this dress on. It was so tight and went all the way down to almost her ankles. <laughs> and she, she had a heck of a hard time getting on the stage, to be honest with you. <laughs> but it was great to watch her. She, what a wonderful voice she had. Yes. But uh, so, so Dinah Washington and uh, you, you, you liked uh, Diana Ross as well. Yes. I liked uh, Carmen McRae. Ooh. Saw I her just, too. <laughs> oh yes, uh, Carmen McRae. Oh. Yeah, she's great. We we had a chance to see Carmen McRae playing at a Holiday Inn in um, New London, Connecticut, one mm. time. Wow. And she was it was an afternoon show, mm. and she came in with her hair curlers still in. <laughs> <laughs> did the show with the hair curlers in. Can you believe that? My goodness. She because she was going to do a show later that evening mm. somewhere, but anyway, that was the style back then. Wow, hair curlers. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've been singing around the Detroit area basically all your life. Yes, sir. Yeah, I began in the early 70s uh -huh. with a group called uh, Joe Rosanova and the Vineyards. Ah, uh -huh. fantastic. Yeah, it was. And one of my first gigs, you know, just right out the gate, top of the poncha train. Sheila oh. Landis from Rochester Hills. <laughs> I used to love that place, top of the punch. Yeah. And they used to have a... Um, they used to have a, uh, a party there once a week on the uh, patio yes. where they brought in big bands. Maynard Ferguson band was there. A lot of great bands came in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to go there once a week in the summer. I saw Johnny Junell's band there. Oh, yeah. That's great. Well, that's a great band, too. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, they played, I think, last night. But the Jeff is running the band now, right. obviously. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, Rick, you're, uh, you play some kind of a special guitar, right? Uh, in this situation, I do play seven-string guitar. Yeah. Which uh, adds to the low end. So I'm tuning that low seven-string to an A. Okay. So, so you got an octave lower than the other A on the guitar. Yeah. It's, uh, it, 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 you, you, you know, the, the music that we heard was just fantastic. I love the, I love the way you play. Thank got you. that great sound, and uh, I love the finger picking and you know all the stuff you do. It's great. Mm -hmm. So tell me about some of these. We've got uh, some uh, albums or some CDs laid out in front of us. Quite a few. Can you tell us? <laughs> it looks like you've been busy we doing, have. doing CDs over the years. We have. Well, this is one of the the first CD I put out was this Jazzscapes uh, with a number of uh, Detroit artists. But before that, um, I had put out vinyl in the early 80s and, mm -hmm. and started my own label, She Land Records. She oh, really? Land is She Land Records in 1981. Right. And some of these early ones, let's see, this one, this one, singer songwriter, just I'll call it love, uh, jazz rendezvous I don't see. Oh, Bebop Angel with Larry Nazaro. Oh. These were all. My favorite sax player in the world. Oh, you bet. Larry, Larry. Nazaro. 
that that gentleman could play. These were all picked up and replicated by a label in Japan. Really? And and that was like that doesn't happen to just anybody. Right. <laughs> that, that was very exciting. So you're popular overseas as well as here. Correct. Yeah. That's fantastic. And also exciting. this one over here was in the UK. Yeah, this one was put out in the United Kingdom. Fantastic. It's kind of a yeah. compilation album of you know, career well, I'm spanning. sitting here with some international stars. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> We're having a G7 summit right now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, maybe G3. <laughs> G for guitar. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Uh, and some of these earlier records you you, uh, you did with uh, combos or big bands or? Combos. Mostly yeah. combos. Yeah. Piano, bass, drums mostly? or Maybe guest horn players or, or guest uh, yeah. Eddie Nuccelli on, on one. So, yeah. Or Joe uh, LaDuca or yeah, whoever some, was hot at the time, Gary some, Shunk. Yeah. So, some great players. Mm -hmm. Some great players. Yeah. Larry Nazaro is one of my absolute favorite sax players. Really? So, so inventive, sound. so emotional, you know, yeah. just responsive. Yeah. And it was a tragedy, tragedy to see him go. Mm -hmm. But... Um, so anyway, uh, you guys have done some uh, things in the studio here. Mm -hmm. Why don't we listen to a little bit of, uh, you know, what you got? Oh, it'd be great. Never know how much I love you. Never know how much I care When you put your loving arms around me I get a feeling that's so hard to bear You get a fever, fever Fever when you kiss me Fever when you hold me tight Fever in the morning You give me fever all through the night You know how the sun lights up the day Time. Oh, it lights up the night. I light up. I light up when you call my name because I know that you're going to treat me right. You get me fever, fever when you kiss me. Fever every time you hold me tight. Fever in the morning. Give me fever all through the night. You know that the sunlight. Up the daytime, oh, I light up the night. I light up, I light up when you call my name. I know you're gonna treat me just right, chicken fever, fever. When you kiss me, fever when you hold me tight, fever. In the morning, you get me fever all through the night. To my story, here's the point that I have made. You were born to give me fever, be Fahrenheit to celebrate fever, fever. When you kiss me, I fever. When you hold me tight, fever. In the morning, baby, fever all through the night. Everybody here tonight got a fever. That is something everybody knows. Fever is such a new thing, darling. Guess it started long ago. You give me fever, fever. Fever when you kiss me, and fever every time you hold me tight. Fever, fever, fever in the morning, and fever all. Through the night, all through the night, through the night, fever oh, through the night.
Wow, that was fantastic. I love what you guys do. Thank you. <laughs> it's great. Uh, I love the guitar solos. The guitar solos are terrific. I love oh, the uh, the way you pick, you know, finger pick as, as well as do the other stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not a guitar player, as you can tell, but uh, it it sounds great. I love it. And Sheila, you got this uh, jazz feel to everything you do. I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this was inherited from your mom, you said. Yeah, and my brothers and sisters, we were all kind of like hams. Oh, is that <laughs> we, right? Well, we like to be expressive. So yeah, we yeah. tell jokes and, you know. It's great. Well, in terms of, um, of uh, things that you've done that you're kind of proud of, can you, can you tell us about some of the better gigs you've had, uh, people you've played for? Or? Well, I would say uh, being in the, uh, uh, well, they used to call it Montreux, Detroit, Jazz Festival that yeah. we've done that over the years and then Rick and I also work in a, a larger ensemble called Brazilian Love Affair Ooh, which is a, a six-piece ensemble two drummers or one is a percussionist one's a kit player mm -hmm. uh, we have a bass player a keyboardist and Rick and I that's um, the gigs that some of those uh, festivals that we played with the Brazilian group have been exciting very very exciting I like that kind of music yeah I, mean, I like that kind of music a lot and Brazilian is just you know, it just kind of picks you up. Samba. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes you feel good, right? So um, this group that you have, this Brazilian group, are you still working with it, or is it something you've done in the past? Well, well when we can, we did a concert, yeah. uh, a great one uh, last summer, but it's hard to tote around that many people anymore. Uh, you know, tell me about it. Smaller, I it. smaller groups are kind of in, and uh, yeah. duos, trios, and uh, I've, I've kind of picked up putting in percussion parts that yeah. um, we incorporate into the act. Right. I, I know. I, I, I ran it. I ran an eighteen-piece band with two vocalists for ten years. Heavens. And it took about fourteen million light years off my life. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. All those checks. <laughs> yeah. All right. Those, those, it, it, those, that, and now I run an, a nine-piece band, a Dixieland band. So. Great. Anyway, it's uh, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, as you know, Rick. You know, but two-piece two -piece group is interesting because you don't have to worry about people showing up the last minute and you know maybe being slightly inebriated and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to be completely inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that's a good one, point. One of the things about the the, uh, the pliability of, of having a, a two or even a three piece is you can like you can pivot like like the wind, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can change a tempo, maybe change a key. Yeah. You don't have to wait for the bass player to turn the page. You know, right. you have that exactly. immediacy which is, is it just sort of comes yeah. out of the jazz feel. Yeah, you want to do an extra chorus or two? Why not? Have at it, right? <laughs> or so vamp. It's, it's a lot different than playing, uh, you know, from the page. Right, exactly. So that's great. So, uh, Rick, how many uh, different bands have you played with? You've probably played with a bunch. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I started out as probably more of a influenced by rock music, like most people. The yeah. Beatles and oh, yeah. British rock. Yeah. And Santana I liked a lot because he was kind of going towards Latin jazz. Yeah. I love Santana. And then, uh, you know, when I went to Oakland University in the 80s, early 80s, mm -hmm. and then got more into studying, you know, the more traditional. Right. And then f discovered, like, Kenny Burrell and Wes Montgomery. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. You know, the more traditional. And I always kind of leaned towards the guys who had a little more blues in their playing. Yeah. Yeah. So Kenny Burrell was, he could definitely play blues if he wanted to. Good Detroit guy, right? Yeah. Right. Did you ever play with the, um, the big band, what was it called, the Brookside Band or whatever it was out of uh, Oakland? No, we had the Afram. Afram. Afram with Do Marvin Doc Holliday was the. Oh, yeah. Was, was running the show right. there. Yeah. yeah, I played in that band. Oh, that's great. Yep. A lot of fun. So anyway, let's listen to another tune. Oh, yeah. What do you think? For sure. <laughs> In the spring To give your heart A little song to sing And then a kiss But more than this I wish you love And in July 
some lemonade to go you in some leafy blade I wish you help but more than well I wish you love my breaking heart and I agree that you and I Baby, we could never be so in my best, my very best. Let me set you free. I wish you sheltered from the storm, cozy fire to keep you warm. But most of all, when snowflakes fall, I wish you love, 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 love. in the spring to give your heart a little song to see and then a kiss with more than this I wish you love 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 and you like some lemonade to cool you in some leafy layer I wish you health but more than wealth I wish you love 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 my big and I agree that you and I we could never be my best, my very best, I get to set you free. I wish you shelter from the storm. Cause if I had to keep you warm, but most of all, when snowflakes fall, but most of all, when snowflakes fall, but most of all, when snowflakes fall, I wish you love. Wow, another great tune. <laughs> you, guys are, yeah, you guys are great. Thank I you. love it. I got I love that jazz, you know, that soft jazz feel that you got, which is terrific. It's uh a lot of fun. But some of these CDs that you've uh, that you've put out, I assume you do different styles of music on those CDs as well. Yeah, quite a bit. Um I, some of these early ones I tended to do exclusively my own material. Mm -hmm. and, and I oh, you wrote your own stuff? Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Because I, I love pop music, and, and I grew up with the Beatles as well. And it's like, oh, here, here's a little melody. Here's the verse. Here's the pre-chorus. Here's the chorus. Here's the vamp. You know, by yeah. studying the Beatles, I, I learned what, what constitutes a song, uh, what constitutes a, a hook, uh -huh. you know, the part that everybody wants to sing. Um, so, yeah, I focused on the original material and then, then sang a lot of standards because that's what the gigs of the day required. And then I get into some pretty good blues, and uh, uh, a local DJ uh, discovered one of our CDs recently when we sent it to him, and he, he played a cut I wasn't expecting. And it was, he called it his slow burn. It was Billie Holiday's A Baby Get Lost, written by oh. Leonard Feather. And we, oh, yeah. and we had told him, oh, play this, 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 and this. And he goes, nah, I want that cut. It's like, OK. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you never know. <laughs> right. You never know what's going to strike a chord with the public. You know? Have you done it, um, any types of radio type shows where you go on the radio and do something? Well, we were frequent guests uh, on the Mitch Album Show for many years. Oh, really? Yep, on JR. Wow. Right, right in the studio. Yeah. That's fantastic. You know, we, we'd uh, get all geared up and wait for the signal coming out of the commercial breaks. And like, uh -huh. and now the band. And then you yeah. play for about 
20 to 30 seconds. Is that it? Yeah, <laughs> and then it was over, huh? Yep. And then there's like a clap track. Oh! Yeah, right, 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 <laughs> right, yeah. It was always fun. Yeah. I think it's interesting, some of the albums we did together, I mean, they're really kind of... Eclectic. Eclectic, because we could put, you know, we don't, there's no label saying you have to do this or that, you know, like mm -hmm. most people are under a contract. Right. There's, there's you know, people who are going to say you're going to do an album of standards, you're going to do this, so we basically... Producer to basically tells you what you're going to do, right? And, and we have and our own studio, And so. this in particular, this, this is Rick's own, a lot of his own creations, which um, are, are really, I think this is a very good album. Um, I'm on it, but not really. I'm way in the background, maybe just kind of as a texture. Like, like wordless vocal. Yeah, a wordless vocal. Okay. But, but that's more like a, I would call that like world music or not really new age, but. Well, kind of new agey. Right? Yeah. World music. It's yeah. got an edge to it, too, though. It's not too soft. Well, I like the bluesy feel that you got on guitar. I mean, it's really, Thanks. really. Uh, I think really that's an important element of, of jazz players in general. When there's someone who doesn't really hit play blues you kind of can tell yeah right because all I the sure good can. all the guys you were mentioning earlier the sax players that you like you know Sonny yeah. State and all that they, they could go into the blues when they're they all blues to. players yeah. right Absolutely. even if they're playing something more like a bebop where it's you know more of an up-tempo thing or something yeah uh, blues is great um, I just came back from New Orleans we played a lot of blues down there I bet it that was, was fun it's a lot of fun anyway um, let's let's do another tune Sounds good. <laughs>
about some of the people that have played on some of these albums that you know there that you've done here in Detroit what uh, who are some of the better players that you've played with in the uh, Detroit area well besides him <laughs> yeah, besides, besides Rick, right. besides Rick. Um, let's see Wendell Harrison oh. who's a, a great uh, he plays the tenor and he's also a clarinetist. He did okay. play clarinet. He uh, did. On, one track, on yes. that one track. Oh. But we've already talked about Larry Nazaro. He's <coughs> yeah. really, Larry. absolutely one of my favorite sax and, players. And he played yeah. the alto. And as uh, you know. I sat well. next to George Benson in the big band a few times. I bet that was And fun. he's a great player. Oh, yes. And he's on, he's on that album. Yep, George is he's on, on this on one. Three or four tunes, I believe. So, the, yeah, you played with some, some <coughs> terrific uh, players from the Detroit area. And um, oh, someone I want to mention especially is, is our drummer, uh, a, a gal that came up from Toledo. We met her in, down in Toledo at a jazz club called Rusty's Jazz Cafe. Her name is right. Karen Tamales. 
she grew up in the Toledo area, and then we uh, we convinced her to come up to the Detroit area and go to Wayne State, which she did, and got her music degree. Wow. And we play with Kieran uh, frequently, and, and she's the, the, the principal uh, drummer on this uh, Walking After Midnight. Kieran just has wonderful technique. She studied with, who was the Motown fellow that she studied oh, with? Uh, Pistol. Pistol, Pistol Allen. Allen. Oh, right. I Rich, remember Richard Pistol, Pistol well, Allen. Kinda, he kind of oh, yeah. mentored her. Yeah, he mentored her. And Kieran just, oh, it's really a pleasure to play with Kieran. Yeah. Because uh, some of the gigs that we do, you have to play real sotto voce, real quiet. And so yeah. she'll play little brushes and little, um, the hot rods, yeah, rather, right. rather than the traditional sticks. Right. right. But the feel is still there. So yeah, that's great. I enjoy playing with Kieran. Well, why don't we listen to another tune before we wrap this up? Oh, sounds good. Right. By its cover, you may find you may discover something wonderful. Something wonderful. Something It may hit you where you live with a lot of love, a lot of love to get something wonderful. Don't you know that the music made by Motown by the sea touched by the soul? Speaking to me louder than any rock and roll, it was wonderful.
Marvin's Gaye, Stevie Wonder, and the Supremes. Marvelettes, Martha Reeves. Don't forget Mary Wells, wonderful. Yeah, it was wonderful. Mary Gordy's Mabel Motown. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Well, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're, we're kind of at the point now where we're going to wrap it up. And I certainly want to thank uh, Sheila and Rick for coming in and playing some fantastic music for us today. And uh, we're going to wrap it up, and we'll see you the next time. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you, Joe.